Turns out the way your body burns fat during a fast is only half the story we thought it was. For decades, scientists believed fat loss followed one pathway, with one sequence of enzymes releasing stored fuel when you stop eating. But a new study published just weeks ago in Nature Communications turned that on its head. Researchers discovered your body has a second system for mobilizing fat, a backup pathway that quietly takes over several hours into a fast. And it completely changes how we think about fasting timing. And what makes this discovery so interesting is that this wasn't some brand new enzyme or exotic mechanism. It was a pathway hiding in plain sight the entire time, overlooked simply because nobody thought to look for it. So let's talk about what this means for anyone doing time-restricted eating or extended fasts. Here's the motto we've believed for 20 years. When you fast, your body needs access to stored fat, right? The textbook explanation is a three enzyme assembly line, breaking down triglycerides for fuel. The main gatekeeper is ATGL, adipose triglyceride lipase, the supposed rate limiting enzyme that controls how quickly fat can be released. When you eat, insulin keeps ATGL quiet. When you fast or when adrenaline rises, ATGL wakes up, clips fatty acids from triglycerides, and hands them off to HSL and MGL to finish the job. This appears in every biochemistry course, every nutrition textbook, every paper on lipolysis. And the reason this model has stuck around for so long is that it worked great. In short-term fasts and in exercise scenarios, ATGL clearly dominated. It made the entire system look linear, predictable, like fat burning was controlled by a single on-off switch. But biology doesn't always work in clean lines. It works in layers, redundancies, and backups, especially for something as crucial as accessing energy. Now, entering the 2025 University of Pittsburgh study, researchers analyzed human adipose tissue from seven participants in a tightly controlled 10-day controlled fast, not self-directed fasting at home, but an actual clinical setting where every factor is monitored. They looked at gene expression throughout the fast and saw something a little unexpected. The genes for the well-known fat release enzymes, ATGL, HSL, and MGL, weren't really increasing at all. Some even dropped, but lysosome-related genes were surging. These are your cells recycling centers, acidic compartments that break down cellular debris. And they also contain LAL, liposome acid lipase, a fat digesting enzyme. What's wild is that the lysosomal fat processing was never taken seriously as a major energy pathway. This was because liposomes were always viewed as the trash processors, not actually fuel regulators. In reality, liposomes consistently monitor nutrient availability. They can ramp up both autophagy and fat processing when energy is low, acting as a metabolic switchboard. The research team had a bold hypothesis. What if there's a separate fat mobilization pathway they were thinking happening inside liposomes? One that becomes dominant during prolonged fasting. They tested it in mice and then in human fat tissue to see if this hidden system was actually real. This is where the study gets really interesting. The researchers created mice where they could switch off either ATGL or LAL, specifically inside fat cells. So they could watch what happened during a fast. And here's the part that actually made me stop reading for just a moment. When they switched off ATGL and then gave the mice a drug that acts like adrenaline, fat release completely shut down. That makes sense because adrenaline normally uses ATGL to release fat quickly. So when ATGL is disabled, that fast response system can't work. Then they flipped the experiment. This time they turned off LAL, the enzyme inside the liposomes. And the results were the mirror opposite. With LAL turned off, the adrenaline-style fat burning still worked just fine, but during a longer 24-hour fast, fat release dropped dramatically. So the fast response system was untouched, but the long-term system broke. And that's the whole point of the story. Your body actually uses two different fat burning systems, one for quick energy and a completely different one for longer fasts. ATGL handles the short-term adrenaline-driven release, LAL, 
takes over later in the fast when your body needs steady fuel. This also solves a mystery researchers kept running into for years. Fat burning sometimes continued even when ATGL levels were low. It wasn't a mistake or a loophole. Your body was simply switching to its second system. Why does this matter for 16-8, 24, or 24-hour fast? Because the timing of these pathways is different. But we do need to be careful here. Mice enter deeper fasting states much faster than humans. Their metabolic clock is sped up. In mice, ATGL dominates the first four to eight hours of fasting, while LAL becomes the primary system beyond 12 hours. If we conservatively translate that to humans, and this is only a model, of course, the liposomal pathway may become more dominant somewhere past the 16 to 18 hour mark and possibly beyond that. This matches what a lot of people notice, 20 hour fasts, or 24 hour fasts feel different than 16, eight, not just more hunger, but a, a different mental clarity, different energy, and basically a totally different gear. This study gives a biological reason for those reports. And it may also explain why some people plateau on 16, eight, but then see progress again when they stretch their window slightly, not because 16, eight stops working, but because they finally tap into a system that only wakes up later. And here's where it gets even more interesting for longevity. The team looked at a bigger pattern, which genes switch on together during fasting. And those patterns are linked too. They found links between the liposomal fat mobilization pathway and genes associated with Alzheimer's disease, certain cancers, and other age-related conditions. This isn't proof of disease prevention, but it reveals a mechanistic overlap between prolonged fasting and cellular pathways that influence aging. The key players are MIT TFE transcription factors, especially TFEB, which regulate liposomal function. TFEB surges during fasting in both mice and humans. It's already a major target in aging research because of its role in autophagy, the cellular cleanup process. Now we know it also controls a major fat release pathway during longer fasts, and here's another layer. TFEB is influenced by mitochondrial stress, inflammatory load, and nutrient signaling. All systems that degrade as we age. If longer fasts activate TFEB more strongly because of this liposomal pathway, it creates a plausible bridge between fasting, fat mobilization, and brain or metabolic resilience. But here's what this study does not say. It doesn't say shorter fasts are ineffective. ATGL works perfectly at 12, 14, and 16 hours. And it does not identify the optimal fasting duration for humans as of yet. We need controlled trials for that. And it does not say everyone should move to longer fasts. Tolerance varies by person and by lifestyle. What it does say is that fat metabolism is more layered and more flexible than we ever thought. Your body isn't relying on just one system. It switches between different fat burning tools, depending on what's going on. And if you're someone who occasionally pushes past that 16 hour window into 20 or 24 hours, this study suggests you may be tapping into metabolic machinery that shorter fasts don't fully engage. The beauty of science is that it always has another layer. Just when we think we understand something, fat burning works like this. A new study reveals a missing piece. This paper was published in February, 2025, and it's going to reshape how researchers think about fasting, fat mobilization, and possibly therapeutic fasting protocols. Will this change what you do tomorrow? Maybe not, but it's worth knowing that once you cross that later fasting window, your body isn't just doing more of the same process. It's switching pathways, activating different machinery. And that's what I love about studies like this. It's not a supplement trick or a diet hack. It's a fundamental discovery about human metabolism, the kind that forces textbooks to be rewritten. So if you've ever felt your body shift at certain fasting hours, science finally has an explanation for what you've been feeling. If you want to read the study yourself, I'll link it below. And if this kind of metabolic reality checking is your thing, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Dave. I'll see you guys in the next one.